I think this scarecrow is after a different kind of brain. Hey guys, this is another retro review, and one I've been very much looking forward to filming. This is episode 11 of Supernatural Season 1, aka the Scarecrow episode. One of the most well-known episodes of the entire show. The Scarecrow episode has a lot of different elements into it that make it so iconic, one of them being the Scarecrow villain, the whole pagan ritual god town little thing, the conflict that happens between Sam and Dean temporarily splitting them up, as well as the introduction of Meg. So obviously this episode starts off with Sam picking up the phone uh, with his dad on the other line. I actually, looking at the DVD case, realized that Asylum was actually the season one mid-season finale. So that was a pretty cool way to keep people, you know, on their toes for two months. During this conversation, we find out what John has been doing. We find out that he's actually after the demon that killed their mom. But as always, he is stubborn and he wants the brothers to stay away from him to keep them safe. But at the same time, make them go and hunt supernatural monsters and save people. So, and eh, fathers. We see that Sam still holds the resentment. He's still the much more challenging, the much more questioning brother. But the instant that Dean picks up the phone, he doesn't even get more than one question out of his father before he's immediately listening to orders and doing what his father tells him. This obviously leads into the conflict between the brothers in the car and eventually leads them to split up. The different ideals, Sam wants to go and find dad in Sacramento, whereas Dean is wanting to follow his father like a good son. And this again is another element of the brothers' relationship that was so well established through this season and well into the next four seasons. So as Sam starts to head to Sacramento, we meet Meg, a very, very important character who I'm actually surprised that Supernatural hasn't been lazy enough to bring back from the dead. Like, seriously, when Crowley killed her, I actually cared. That's when death still mattered. But when we meet Meg, we don't know who she is. All we know her as is this other teenager figure that Sam can relate to because she is trying to get away from controlling and manipulative and sort of commanding parents. And she is a mirror image of Sam, ergo why they mix together. But as Dean slowly starts to figure out the mystery and eventually he figures out what is going on, he still correlates with his brother and in the end he helps save a couple and Sam and him make up on a phone call. Now while the pagan concept is a cool idea, the entire town is a little obvious of what's going on, mainly the guy who runs the pie store. The dude is so obvious! But as for the Scarecrow itself, its first kill is so well shot. Kim Manners was a well-known director for the X-Files shows, and this is one of the reasons why Supernatural had such a good standing, is because a lot of the people who worked on the show in the beginning were people who worked on the X-Files. The first kill is so cool. Because as the couple are being murdered off screen by the Scarecrow, we have this slow panning down shot. Straight in the middle is the Scarecrow's tower, the pipe, the cross that it's on. And all there is is this, these ropes swinging in the wind. A perfectly set up shot, one of the best shots of the episode and of the entire freaking season in my opinion. So I did this episode rather quickly after Asylum so there wasn't that much time for quotes or from people's comments, so one of them being uh, from Megan B. My favorite line from Scarecrow, I hope your apple pie is freaking worth it. But the other thing I really wanted to talk about with this episode was the locations of where they shot this episode. Because aside from where they shot the gas station, which I think is an area around Fort Langley, I cannot be entirely sure, I almost know where every other shot is because it consists of being outside of Fort Langley and in Langley itself. So what better way to talk about it than to actually go there? And this is the orchard. Now admittedly the trees are a lot smaller. It's because the trees have since changed. This is a location that's 13 years since the episode that it premiered in. So obviously it's changed. And they did a really good job though, when, even when it wasn't with all the full trees, of making it look endless. Because you can see it's not that far down. It's like what? 10 trees down and but there is the house off in the corner over there so yeah this is where the scarecrow was admittedly it's a lot smaller and it's not as cool as it used to be but that's it and then this here is the bridge 
that Dean is chased out of by the sheriff when he's asked to leave town. He also comes back underneath this bridge. This is just out of Fort Langley. Aside from the really cool locations, this episode also featured Cancer Man. I forgot he was in this episode. So that was really cool to see another X-Files moment in this episode. So while the episode still has really great moments, really great shots, a really cool conflict between the brothers and a resolution, a really cool monster, a really cool introduction of Meg, the town itself has kind of lost its, its feeling. It's, it's really obvious. When you go into it, you just see how obvious it is now, and you kind of wonder how that girl never realized any of this. Yeah, yeah, you're in the boonies. Yeah, you got people being murdered or being missing every year, kind of on a regular basis. So again, it doesn't really work too well with the town aspect, but that's honestly the only negative this episode has. So in the end, I'm gonna give the Scarecrow a six out of seven. But before I finish this, again, if any of you don't have the DVD, Netflix screws up the music again, at least for Canadian audiences, because at the end when Meg is making the call to Yellow Eyes, it's playing this really terrible rock song on Netflix, but on the DVD, and as it was originally aired, it has Bad Company playing in the background, so I had no idea again what's happening. This happened exactly the same way with Skin, with one of the best parts of that episode, so yeah, buy the DVDs. Unless it's just a Canadian thing, I'm not entirely sure. But anyways guys, that's my Scarecrow episode review. I hope you guys liked it. Faith is coming up next. Again, a really great episode. I swear to God, if Netflix takes out Don't Fear the Reaper though by Blue Oyster Cult, I'm gonna throw my cup at the TV screen. If you guys got any comments about that episode, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and any interesting points, I'll make sure to read those in the review when I do it next. If you like this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Anyways guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.